Hello everybody, and welcome back to the beautiful world of Prometheus. The sun is shining, the bees are buzzing, and our crops are looking very bountiful. But as always, we have some chores on our list. And the first of which, I think we need to start uh, thinking about what we're going to do in terms of upgrading our farm here. Um, at the very least, we want to get our hands on some better seeds. Uh, in particular, we look at our workshop here. Uh, we want to get ourselves some avocados as well as strawberries, and that is going to allow us to start crafting some really good food recipes. Uh, so we set up this kitchen. It's looking really nice, but it's missing a few things. It's missing, of course, number one, those ingredients, and then number two, uh, I'm going to want a deep freeze freezer setup. So once we start crafting the really good things like the fruit muffins um, and the savory rolls, let's just take a look at those right now. So this is one of my favorite foods. Savory roll, extremely powerful, lasts 1,200 seconds, 225 health, stamina, food consumption. It gives you 10% experience gain as well. Then it's counteracted by the fruit muffin, which is 225 stamina and 35% experience gain. So those two alone are just extremely powerful. And then if we combine that with, you know, our cooked meats, we can have our cooked meat and our stringy meat. That's another 5% experience. Or we could also be using bacon, which unfortunately we ran out of bacon. We're going to have to be keeping an eye out for pigs while we're walking around the map today. Uh, but yeah, I think... The very first goal for today is, you know, let's take a breather, do some uh, relaxing sort of setting up this farm, and get ourselves some really good food going. So I'm just going to harvest all this up. And if you have your crops set up next to your farm like this, having an active beehive actually gives you a boost to the amount of crops that you harvest from them. So it's definitely a good idea to have the beehive here. and. Um, I believe the radius for the beehive is 1.5 floor tiles away from it. Um, so in this case, oh, this one is actually getting the beehive buff. So you can have, I think probably five like this is the maximum. If we did a sixth one here, it might not be getting the buff any longer, but you can build five more out in that direction, five more out in that direction, and have a pretty big setup of crops getting the boost just from one single beehive. Um, and that boost also actually extends above it, so you can basically build a second layer of a farm above it and be getting the beehive boost from one single beehive on all of those crops in every direction, including 1.5 tiles above it. So that's something to keep in mind when you're setting up your farms. Definitely want to have one of these centrally located. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to need some money to get our hands on these seeds. Uh, it's going to be 140 ren to get both the strawberry and the avocado. And, you know, we do have some exotics that we can sell, but I would rather not uh, have to do that right now. I think we want to hold on to those exotics. So what I think we're going to do to kick things off is actually the first operation on this planet. So Nomad Expedition, this is a fairly simple operation to take out. Uh, you do have to actually kill a ton of Drax at one point, um, but it's going to give us 250 Ren, and that's going to be more than enough to get ourselves set up uh, for those seeds. So I think let's go ahead and kick things off today with Nomad Expedition. Get ready, Prospector. Thanks to Group 15, we just got access to a previously off-limits part of Icarus, right on the fringe where the terraforming started falling apart. This is all new for me too, but from the info in the briefing packet, I can see why they're only letting the brains in. It's a little more peculiar than what you've seen of Icarus so far. By the looks of it, the UDA want you to test some bloody insulting new AI tech. This ain't for Freshfoots, but there's a lot of new planet out there to explore. You in? I'm in. And as you can see, because we're playing on hard mode, we actually get a boost to our reward. So it's 375 Ren and 75 exotics. So this is going to be really nice. Let's definitely get this going. Hey, Prospector. This place is pretty different from the rest of the Terra Zone, huh? Data on this section of Icarus is limited and mostly classified. What we do know is the terraforming 
did not work. On the topic of not working, I have a brand new bit of experimental garbage for you. The UDA is testing out some groundbreaking new tech. Some kind of AI. I think they can replace me with some 8-bit bag of bolts with attitude. Hardly pay me anything anyway. Simple? Yeah. Simply not needed. It's not like I'm some damn Luddite, but hell, I'm more valuable than a talking toaster. I'm... Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Um, it'll be in an OES pod nearby. Go grab the thing. All right, so we got this mission kicked off. Um, I have completed this one before, so I'm familiar with what I have to do. We're gonna have to plant a tomato seed, <laughs> harvest it. Um, hopefully it works, because sometimes this quest can be a little buggy. Um, hopefully we can get it done in one shot and not have to restart because of any bugs. Maybe they've fixed that since the last time I did it. Let's go ahead over to this drop pod and There's grab... the pod. Oop. And there's a... Drac. What the hell is that? This damn place. You can either... Oh, looks like land wasn't the only thing adapted around here. UDA hasn't been very forthcoming with information. That's a lot of steak. I've heard rumors. Some of them are locals. Some seem to be altered versions of Earth wildlife. All of them weird and probably dangerous. I wouldn't venture too far out unless you're equipped to defend yourself. Alright, you got the stupid thing. I got it. This is the third version they've worked on, and it seems only good I might for just basic errors. Let's interrupt him here. Let's uh, so, do this. <laughs> Hello, right. Prospector. Just... Simplified Mission Prospector Liaison Version 3, Connection Verifier. Uh, refer to me as Simple. Bloody stupid robot. My function is to guide you through basic assignments for the UDAA. Communication is one way. Not much for replacement then. Bucket of bolts. Your first mission is to cultivate and... Good start, Prospector. <laughs> Here, have some praise. Well done. So we've already Congratulations. done all the objectives ahead of time. Um, so I want to see if this is... Let's uh, see, this one is not receiving the B-buff. Okay, so I was correct. So you can extend it uh, four plots away from it. The fifth one is not getting the Bs. So you just get the four uh, on both sides of it like this. And you should be able to get the buff. I mean, we, we probably actually could maybe see if we extend it out um, in this direction. Let's place that again right here. And plant that seed one more time. And so it is actually receiving the B-buff. So it is like a big square around it. So you can go one more out in both directions. So you can have, what, 16 on this side. Um, you know, the spacing, you're going to have to work out the spacing. But you can get a good amount of crop plots buffed by this single beehive using that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to wait for a tomato to grow. Um, that's going to take a little bit of time. Let's just go ahead and water it. Get it going a little bit faster. Uh, I didn't get my water can in there. We are going to water it. Uh, right click. Okay. Just do that. Um, that'll make them grow a little bit faster. 160%. Very cool. We don't have any fertilizer on us right now, so, uh, you know, we're just going to have to wait out the growth timer there. That's not a big deal. We have plenty of things that we're going to want to take care of. I'm going to go ahead dump that meat that I found in our kitchen bench here. Um, and let's take a look at our talents and tech tree. So since we're going to start crafting up some really good foods like the fruit muffin and things like that, I'm going to get the second point in vegetarian. This will give a 30% boost to uh, the fruit muffins modifier, so that's going to be even more experience gain, even more stamina. That's going to be really nice, and there are a ton of vegetable and fruit dishes that you can craft that take advantage of this. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and grab the recipe for bread dough. That's going to be required for a lot of the recipes that we want to make, so let's go ahead and grab that. Now, I'm also going to want to start searching for some more deep mining ore veins. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this, and we're going to use this to look for some specific things. Um, one being maybe obsidian. 
Some people in the comments did let me know that that tunnel that I was passing through in the episode where I got the obsidian. Oh. A new work order has been received. One of your fellow contractors has been severely injured and returned to orbit for treatment. They have Wasn't expecting that. Help in locating and escorting okay. a blue back that was abandoned during extraction. You are advised that once the aforementioned creature has been escorted back to the contractor's encampment, you may make use of any of the supplies left behind. Additionally, the contractor wanted the following message passed to you. Please save Daisy. She saved me more times than I can count. It's the least I can do for her. The contractor currently lacks a functional trachea. I did my best to substitute. You oh, man. Okay, so we have to escort this animal. Um, it looks like it's over here. This is a little different than I remember it being. So I guess we go over here and then there's a uh, base that you have to escort the animal to. And the entire time that you're escorting the animal, like countless Drax continuously spawn and attack you. So it's pretty annoying. Um, I don't think I'm going to bring my MOA out for that one because you have to set your MOA to follow you and all of the Drax that keep spawning will just consistently attack it. It gets pretty hectic. So I think we're just going to go on foot. Um, let's wait for this storm to blow over and once that's said and done with, let's head out and take care of this mission. Oh, and I forgot. We were talking about the deep mining ore scanner. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. We're going to be searching for some things, including obsidian. Um, some people in the comments did let me know that that tunnel that I was going through has obsidian in it. Um, so there is some in there. We don't really need a deep mining, deep mining vein for it necessarily if there's enough obsidian in there. But this will be very useful, finding ourselves all the veins that we need. So I'm going to grab that. And we are going to eventually want to get the electric carpentry bench, the electric masonry bench. I'm just going to go ahead and skip the advanced masonry bench for now. Um, we aren't in need of those quite yet, um, but I am going to want to expand our base into concrete um, eventually, hopefully in the next couple of episodes. So we're going to get a concrete base up and running, and we will definitely want this. But in order to achieve that, we are going to need a lot more resources. I want to get more deep veins going. I want to get more solar panels going, so you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, but for the time being, let's just get this mission done, let's get our farm going, and start getting some really good foods for ourselves. Let's not forget our water bottle. Alright, so the storm has blown over. I decided I'm gonna bring the MOA with me. Um, I really don't want to have to walk this whole distance on foot, so we're just going to take the MOA with us. We'll see how bad it is. I remember it being pretty annoying with all of the Drax, but if it ends up being really bad, you know, let's just, let's just have this serve as a warning for you guys not to do what I'm about to do. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take the MOA over there and try and get this mission taken care of. Alright, I believe we should be approaching the location of the animal pretty soon here. This is where its pin is on the map. I did not remember it spawning here. Um, but let's see where it is. Oh, and there, I think that's uh, Daisy right there. All right, so we're gonna have to immediately set our mount to follow and we have to get this guy, claim ownership, this is Daisy, and get him to follow us. Um, you can ride your MOA like this, but you'll see, like, you're going to have to constantly be jumping off to kill Drax. So, get him to follow us. Uh, that purple icon over there is where we're headed. This might be our first... nope, not quite. Oh, here we go. Yeah, they're already spawning. Let's start taking care of these guys. We're going to have quite a few we're going to have to kill here. There's one behind us. Yeah, we just need to keep moving. They are constantly spawning. And Daisy is slow as heck. <laughs> so we're going to have to just basically go at walking speed the entire distance. Uh, for a, an idea of how far we have to go, it's all the way over there. All the way over there into the corner of J8. So 
Let's get walking. Let's see how many Drax we have to kill here. There's another one already. Oh, he's stuck on a tree. Very nice. Alright, we're going to ignore that one. Uh, we got another one over here. Oh, that one's stuck. I missed. Okay. Koopa took a little damage there. That's unfortunate. So yeah, having the health bars for this mission is like extremely, extremely vital in my opinion. You're able to spot the Drax long before they get within attacking distance. So, 100% recommend getting that one before you take this mission on if you're not quite at the level where you can uh, get that skill. Oh, we got a triple spawn here. Oh, man. Keep moving. So I don't think the bluebacks can be set to defensive. Um, if you attack these guys in the wild, they are very tough. That's kind of a little bit of a letdown. You can't set them to defensive and help you actually defend against the Drax in this. Um, the Moa is also only passive, so you just have to take care of everything on your own. Attention Prospector. Your sample has grown to an acceptable maturity and is ready for processing. Please place it in the OES pod for retrieval. I could be skinning up every single one of these guys. Uh, getting a ton of meat. Oh, come on. How you doing, Daisy? 96%. <laughs> um, I could be stopping and skinning up all these guys for a ton of meat. I'm just going to try and get this over with as quick as possible. Um, if we return on this route, we'll see if those bodies are still there. They'll probably despawn, but for now, I think I'm just going to leave the skin, leave the meat and just focus on getting this objective completed. Daisy's stuck on a tr twig over there. There is level 42. That is awesome. That's another good thing about this quest, is you're just going to rake in the experience points. Uh, unfortunately, our bacon buff wore off, so we're missing out on some good experience from that, but... The whole reason we're doing this is so we can get ourselves some even better experience buff foods. Alright, so I can see the building. We're approaching it. We're almost done with this quest. That's very awesome. Let's get this taken care of. Alright, we're almost there. I did see a couple more Drax spawn behind us. Oh, yep. And they caught up. A few more coming. Let's just take care of them. That deer almost blocked my shot there. I'm going to kill this last guy. He's going to come anyways. Alright. Let's go, Daisy. Oh! Okay, I thought that was my MOA. <laughs> okay, not my MOA. Man, these things do not stop. That might be another one over there. Alright. Good work, We Prospector. did it. The injured contractor would be greatly relieved that Daisy made it back home, had they not died horribly from their wounds before oh, I could man. inform them of your success. You may gather any supplies left on this property for your own use. Daisy will also need a new home. Please return to your previous objective and place the sample in the OES pod when ready. Alright, I don't know if I want to take Daisy if I'm being honest. Um, we're going to have to go all the way back with Daisy in tow. It's going to take quite some time. Uh, but let's go ahead and loot up this base. Let's get you guys inside. Um, so there is a little bit of stuff. We definitely want to grab this bed. We don't even have a proper bed for ourselves yet, so let's get that. Um, there's a little bit of random stuff in here. We don't really need that. The furnace has some shaped obsidian for us. That's cool. We'll go ahead and take... That. Let's leave the iron ore. We don't need that, really. These boxes. Obsidian pickaxe. Very cool. Let's take a look outside. There's a ton of animals over there. 
Um, and what I think I'm going to do is tear down all the Scorio walls from this place. Those are going to be a little useful to us, so I might as well grab them up. Skin this Drac too. Alright, so I think that's pretty much everything from the loot. Let's just go ahead and tear down the base here. Alright, and with that, we have looted everything that we want here. We have another visitor to take care of. Um, but yeah, we got everything that we came here for. We are over encumbered, so we're going to be quite slow. And I decided we're going to bring Daisy back. We have all of this scoria, so we can build a much larger pen. We have a second food trough, a second water trough from this place. So, Daisy, let's get on home, buddy. Hopefully nothing crazy happens. Like, immediately get attacked by Drax. Let's keep going. This is going to be a long, slow trek back to the base. Yep. Daisy is slow. <laughs> Man, it is going to be deep into the night by the time we get back. And as the sun is setting here, I realize I have everything I need just to sleep. So we're just going to uh, trap ourselves inside of a floor. <laughs> And then let's just set up a tiny little structure here. Get a roof over our heads. All right, we have everything we need to sleep here. I'm just gonna set this up and go to sleep. Good morning. Very uneventful night. <laughs> Very quick, but we're just gonna pick all this back up and get on our way in the daytime. All right, now that it's daytime, let's get back on our journey. You can see the massive amount of progress we made last night. <laughs> we got a long ways to go. I'll see you guys all the way back at the base unless something interesting happens. Alright, so as I was thinking about it, I'm pretty sure that there is no saddle for the blueback yet. I'm not sure if you can attach a cart to it either. Um, I wanted to put the Moa saddle on the blueback and then ride it all the way back, but I think... Uh, it hasn't really been fully implemented in the game, so what I'm just going to do is leave him on follow, go all the way back to the base, and <laughs> we'll see if Daisy can make it home on her own. But uh, if there's no point in keeping the blue back, I'm sorry, I'm not going to wait around for it. It's taking way too long. We got so much stuff to take care of today, so sorry Daisy, good luck making it home. Let's get this bacon back. You know, it is a tough world out here on Icarus, you gotta earn your way. So, if Daisy can prove that she can survive the wilderness all the way back to my base, then she has earned herself a spot in my stable, but otherwise, you know, she can go meet her owner <laughs> in the afterlife. Let's take a peek at our copper here. We don't really have any inventory space, but it, it's been going. That's kind of a good gauge to see um, where our biofuels are at as well. So I think our biofuels should be just about empty, um, considering that we usually get about that much copper uh, from a biofuel can, if I remember correctly. So we're going to go over, check out our biofuel cans, get that titanium, platinum, uh, copper. And let's get to work on getting these seeds. So first things first, of course, we have to harvest this tomato. Drop pod is coming down. Let's get that in the drop pod. All right. Not sure if this has been brought up before, but we have a new way of doing things now. Zenitai have come up with a fancy new way of shipping your exotic halls off world. They're calling it the Orbital Exchange System, OES. A little bit of gold. Abandoning all your planet side tech is a thing of the past, if you prefer. Chuck them in the pod, and it drops it all off at the this station. This is just still here. Pretty cool, some huh? It's free for now, while they're still testing the pods. There they both go. Who okay. knows how much cash they'll rake in from this later. It works in reverse, too. Say you want to order some shiny new gear from the workshop up there? You can get it delivered just by pressing a few buttons. <laughs> what a time to be alive. 
All right, so we got our 300 and something Ren, a bunch of exotics. That's really nice. Um, I'm just going to slap down this Scoria stuff here. All right, and with all of that free Scoria stuff, I'm just going to upgrade the animal pen a little bit. It is so cramped in there. Let's get these walls down, get this thing expanded a little bit. All right, we got our pen expanded out nicely. Let's get down the second uh, food trough and water trough too. That'll give them a little bit more room to work with. They keep botting blocking each other and they keep running out of food to eat because they can't get to the troughs. So hopefully if we have two down like this, uh, that will help kind of counteract that a little bit. And it looks like Daisy made it almost all the way back to the base on her own. So I think she's earned a spot. Let's go on home, buddy. So I know I was just saying how this animal isn't fully implemented um, and there isn't really a use for it, but the next big Icarus update actually is an animal focused update. So maybe they'll fully implement the blueback, maybe we can get a saddle for it, maybe it'll be pretty good. So I think we'll hold on to this um, and just have it in our pen for now. Alright, Daisy made it, wow. I'm actually kind of surprised that she was able to do that 100% HP. Uh, cool. Alright, let's get you guys inside. Alright. Now Daisy is big. <laughs> Daisy is going to be blocking a lot of these animals. But let's just get our scoria wall back down. And welcome to the team, Daisy. So we're going to get that bacon turned into crispy bacon. That's a little bit better than normal bacon. The same 15% experience, but better health and stamina. Um, and it gives you some critical damage boost, so we have tons of animal fat. Let's just get some crispy bacon here. Nice, got our first crispy bacon. That's looking good. So, it also lasts longer than... Oh, it lasts, it lasts the same amount of time as the normal meat. Um, yeah, 12,000 12, seconds, or 1,200 seconds, rather. Um, very nice. That's a great food. That's the first very tasty snack that we've whipped up here on Prometheus. Uh, but with that mission taken care of, uh, we now have the means to get ourselves some good seeds here. So let's go ahead, if I can do it, harvest up our uh, herbs here. Let's get this wheat going. And we are ready to look at our seeds. All right, so for the savory roll, it's mushrooms, avocados, and meat. And then the uh, fruits muffin is watermelons, strawberries, and um, bread dough, I believe. And this the savory roll takes pastry dough. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get both of these. Research them. That's 100 ren, and then we'll craft one of each. So 20, 20, and let's get these down on the planet here. I also don't have any watermelon seeds, so we're going to have to go out and find some watermelons. I think they spawn here on Prometheus. Alright, we got our seed packets. Deliver that back to the station. And let's get to growing. Alright, and we have a pretty massive stockpile of wheat here as well. I'm just going to take all of the wheat that we did not grow, get all this crushing up into flour. That's 76 more flour. We already had 77 sitting in here, so we're going to be pretty good on flour for a while, I feel like. And then I'm going to go ahead and craft up three more farming plots. Let's also upgrade our campfire, get rid of the old... Uh, old one here. Get rid of our old bedroll, too. And let's get the new stuff down. Make sure we set our spawn point. Alright, and we are officially no longer sleeping in a little old bedroll. We have a nice bed. We have a nice campfire here. We are looking good. Alright. So we got our little farm expansion here. Let's figure out what seeds we want to grow here. Let's take up everything that we currently have. All right, so now that our farm plot is empty, let's open up these seed packets. So each one gives us five seeds of the crop that we purchased. I'm going to go ahead and put down 
let's say two strawberries, two avocados. Let's do two mushrooms here. And I'm actually going to do four strawberry plants. You get so many strawberries from each one of these, and I'm going to use those to feed our animals. So that's going to take care of our feed. And then let's get wheat. Wheat is used for a lot of stuff. It's a pretty useful crop, so we're just going to get four wheats down. And that is the state of our farm right now. Yeah, it's nothing super fancy. Uh, every single... Oh! None of them are getting a bee buff because there are no bees. Okay. Let's make sure we're constantly stocking up our bees here. We have a few more. Alright, we got our bees back in there. Two and a half hours of bee production, and it looks like all of them... Yes. Oh, this one is not actually receiving the bee buff, so it's a little bit far. Let's go ahead and remove this. Fortunately, that was just one of our wheat seeds. And now this is receiving the buff. Alright. Very cool. So yeah, this is our little farm set up for now. We have all the ingredients that we need for our desired foods except for watermelon. So we're going to have to go and look for some of those. Um, but for right now, I think we need to go and check on our deep drills because those are definitely out of fuel at this point. Alright, we got our biofuel cans. Let's head into the Arctic and go take care of our deep mining. Alright, so it looks like there's a speck of fuel left in these things. Uh, but we got a good amount of platinum here. We came pretty much just in time. So let's go swap all of these out. That was a pretty good haul. Awesome. Now let's go check on our electric drill, and it should be a pretty similar amount to what we got from our biofuel. I think the rates, yeah, the rates are exactly the same at 1.5 per minute, um, but you don't have to refuel them. So if we ever forget to take care of that chore, that electric deep mining drill will just keep on going. All right, we made it back. I also farmed up a little bit of stone. Um, I say a little bit, a lot of stone. <laughs> so we have all this. I'm just going to dump some of this in the box and then go grab our copper as well. Let's get this titanium smelting. All of this in here. Get all our copper in here. Get our biofuel cans back in here. We'll refuel those. All right, and a good amount of copper from here. Very cool. So I am going to take a quick search around the woodlands for some watermelons. I know I've seen them out here before, so hopefully we can spot some. There's some carrots right there. Uh, but let's go out on a little bit of a search. I also don't know if I've harvested coffee yet. Let's see if we can get some seeds. Alright, um, and with the recent water update, coffee is also actually extremely good. Um, it used to be that coffee was a one-use item. You would just drink it and you'd have like a 300 second buff and it really wasn't that great. But, with the recent update, coffee is now sipped over time, similar to how you would drink out of one of your uh, water canteens. So coffee is actually really powerful now. Uh, but yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and see if we can't find ourselves some watermelon. Oh, we found some watermelon right here. Let's hope we get a seed. Alright, we got some seeds. Very awesome. Four seeds. We are set for watermelon. Now let's get on back to the base. Alright, we got our watermelons. I'm going to remove two of these wheats, actually, and get our watermelons down uh, in those spots. So let's get those going. Awesome. Now we are all set for all of the foods that we're looking for right now. Savory rolls and um, fruit muffins are going to be within our reach very soon here. The other thing that we're going to need, now that we got those foods, are number one, a salting station. Uh, those foods in particular spoil extremely fast, so we're going to need a salting station to try and get that a little bit better. And then, in addition to that, we are going to want a deep freeze. So let's take a look at what we need for the deep freeze. Uh, 20 aluminum, 15 electronics, 10 carbon fiber, 
some platinum and some screws. We should be good on all of that, actually. We have the platinum. We definitely have the aluminum, 25 of it. Let's get all of that out. And I'm going to start putting this deep freeze together and be back with you guys in just a second. And while all of that is crafting up, let's also take a second to look at our talents here. So for our next solo point, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the gunfight perk. So we'll have plus 10% damage and plus 10% reload speed on our firearms. And then for our multiplayer skill tree, I'm going to start working down the shotgun tree. I definitely want to make a shotgun main on this character. I think the shotguns are awesome and want to get the most power out of it. So let's go ahead and grab shotgun slash as the first point in that. All right, and we officially have everything that we need to craft the deep freeze. Now, I'm not going to actually craft this right now because let me show you guys a little something I've been working on on the side as we've been doing this playthrough. You see, Danny Rothko is not alone on Icarus. I actually have a clone, a second character that I created specifically with um, the crafting perks in mind. So this is something that you can do if you want to have the best items in Icarus, but you don't want to spend character points on um, talents such as extra space. Um, Extra space is really a luxury. Uh, it makes your deep freezes have plus five inventory slots. Pretty much any storage container that you craft, including your deep freeze, will have plus five generic inventory slots from this, and then another plus five from level two. Um, I also have stoking the flames on this character, which if I create another electric furnace, it will smelt 15% faster. And then on this character, I actually went ahead and grabbed uh, the minus 25% resource costs for both concrete and glass. We're going to want to be building a lot of concrete and glass, and I think uh, it's kind of a waste to actually have these points on your main character. I know I already grabbed them on my main character, so I'm definitely going to be using a couple of respec points to get those back on my main, but if you create a second character just sort of as like a mule to, to get all of these craft improvements, um, that's going to be a really nice way for you to get all of the benefits of these perks without having to um, waste those points on your main character. So it took me about three hours to level this character up to level 30. Um, and I'll show you the method that I did uh, to actually level this character up super quickly. If you're starting a brand new file, I would 100% recommend just playing through the game normally. You're going to get all the experience that you would get out of Icarus um, just playing the game normally. It's going to take longer in terms of hours, but in terms of fun, what I did was really, really boring. Um, I would only really recommend it if you want to get a second character set up and get it to tier 4 as quickly as possible so you can do things like make that deep freeze with the extra inventory slots. Uh, but basically what you're going to want to do is uh, create a new character, of course, and in your missions, uh, you're going to need the Sticks DLC in order to do this method. So if you don't have the Sticks DLC, there might be another way for you to do it. But basically, you're just going to drop into this mission here, the Expedition, and there will be a location on your map near the center. Um, I'll show you on the open world over here on sticks let's just call this sticks i'm not going to actually create this prospect uh but exactly where this arrow is pointing so the mission will drop you in somewhere around here you're going to have to make your way up through the rivers over to where this arrow is right here and komodos are going to infinitely respawn right here and i'll show some footage on the screen of what that looks like but there's just going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of komodos respawning you're going to want to craft a bunch of bone knives on your character. Get over there. Um, once you're level 5, you're going to be able to get the bone knife. So you're going to craft up a ton of those, and you're just going to be able to kite those Komodos backwards 
and continuously kill them over and over and over and over. It's super, super boring, but you get so much experience. If you do the mission on hard like I did, you get plus 25% more experience, so it goes even faster. Um, as you are progressing on the character, you're going to want to get a couple of talent points in the solo tree and work your way to Lone Wolf. I think you would get this, you get the first one by like level 20-ish or so, and then or no, probably around level 25 and then level 27 or 26, you'd get the second point. Those last few levels really start to slow down. Um, but you can use that method, get a character all the way to level 30 if you want, or, you know, just get it up to level 10, level 20. Up to level 10 will take you, honestly, like 40 minutes maybe. It's super fast at the beginning. Um, but yeah, that's how I created my clone character. And we are going to drop in to Prometheus and we're gonna have this crafting character all set up for us in our open world so that's a, a big tip for you guys is you know create a, a second character and you can get some really nice perks that would otherwise kind of be a waste on your main uh, you know extra space for example so we're gonna take this character drop him into our Prometheus hard world and get him over to the base So here we are at the base with our clone character, very nice, fresh level 30. Uh, let's go ahead, and get inside, and craft up that beautiful deep freeze. As you can see, it has this beautiful yellow glow about it. Craft it up. And boom, deep freeze, expanded 4, plus 10 slots on the deep freeze. Once you've had a deep freeze with expanded level 4 on it like this, you're never going to want to go back to a normal one. It is just so spacious and awesome. Uh, but yeah, with that taken care of, that's pretty much everything I want to do with the clone character right now. Uh, we are going to eventually want to start crafting up a ton of concrete. We're going to upgrade this entire base, redesign it out of concrete and glass. It's going to look amazing. We're going to do some serious construction, but that's a project for the main character uh, as far as gathering the resources go. Um, we're also going to go ahead and upgrade our storage to iron cabinets. Those will also have plus 10 inventory slots in them. It's going to be awesome. So I'm, I'm super happy to have this character. It did take, as I said, a little over three hours of just grinding those Komodos over and over and over again. It is super boring, but if you want to do the same thing, you know, just put on a YouTube video, put on a podcast or something and grind out those levels because it's going to be worth it. All right, we are back on the main character. Let's go ahead and whip this baby out. I'll show you guys, let's just place it on the ground for a second and I'll show you just exactly how good this is. If you've had a deep freeze, you know. Looking at this inventory, this is just absolutely massive. It's basically the equivalent of two deep freezes almost uh, in a single one. So you get basically twice the amount of storage without needing twice the amount of electricity out of it. So it is super worth doing, in my opinion, if you're going to have a base that you're going to be living out of for a long time. So in my case, you know, we're in this for the long haul, so let's get ourselves the best of the best. So we're going to get our deep freeze just set up right there next to our cooking station right now. Uh, we may eventually want to expand this and put in like a plumbed sink or something. Uh, but for the time being, let's just have it set up like this. And we're once again going to have to move our material cleanser. Let's just stick it right here. There's plenty of space all around it, so it's not too much of a, a eyesore sticking right there in the middle of the in the middle of the floor. We got a ton of space. All right, we got everything wired up. This is now plugged in, and our beautiful deep freeze is up and running. Um, if we take a look at our power network. Yeah, you know, we're demanding 8,000 with um, our drill going, with our deep freeze, the electric furnace is running, uh, powered creature detergent turret, and the water borer. So, yeah, you know, we still have half of our power supply um, basically as a variable for whenever we want to turn on these things. Uh, we are going to want to get some more, uh, some more deep drills going as well, but for the time being, let's just focus on our kitchen now that we have this beautiful deep freeze up and running. So the first harvest of our crops is ready to go here. The watermelons still need a little bit more time. Uh, but let's go ahead and grab all these up. It's 178 strawberries just from those. That's so much. 
All right, and just like that, we got 178 strawberries, 24 mushrooms, uh, only 18 avocados, but you know those will keep growing for us. We're just gonna wait a little bit on the watermelons, and we should be good to go for our cooking. Get all these ingredients in the deep freeze here. So the deep freeze does slowly produce ice over time. It's really not that big of a deal. Every once in a while, you're just gonna have to take the ice out, stick it on the ground. If you had a rain reservoir, uh, you could stick the ice in the rain reservoir and it would turn into water. Um, so I think maybe we're going to get a rain reservoir crafted up into here as well, just to make getting water for the troughs a little bit easier. Let's also grab our flour and yeast. Uh, and with this, we're going to start being able to craft bread dough. Let's get 20 bread doughs going. And bread dough also spoils pretty quickly, 800 seconds, so you're going to want to stick that in the deep freeze as soon as it's done crafting. And with the flour that we have remaining, we're going to craft up some pastries as well, so we'll craft up 20 of those once the bread dough is finished up. Alright, the bread dough is finished, let's go ahead and get 20 pastries going here too. Okay, and it looks like our watermelons are done, so let's get those harvested up. It's a nice 27. And then we are going to craft up a salting station for ourselves as well here. Very nice. And let's stick it right down next to our kitchen over here. I have been gathering a little bit of salt here and there, so we have 127. Not a huge amount, but that'll be more than enough for what we need for a while. Alright, and with all of our ingredients ready to go, we are ready to start crafting our food, so let's get our 20 fruit muffins going here. Scroll down, 20 of these bad boys. It's going to take a little while, but let's get those crafted up. Alright, we got our 20 fruit muffins. Amazing. So I'm going to stick 10 of those in the deep freeze, just as normal unsalted version. And then we're going to salt up 10 of them here. So as you can see, uh, 2,300 seconds, or 2,400 seconds on the spoil time when it's salted. And the unsalted is 1,200 seconds. So it's exactly double the amount of durability on the uh, fruit spoilage. I do have that perk that slows my food spoiling in the inventory. So that may be a little bit different for you if um, you actually have not gotten those perks. But let's go ahead. Um, and eat our first fruit muffin here. And we have a fourth food uh, buff slot, so we got that. And now we're getting 46% experience gain. So that's thanks to the talent that we grabbed, this one here. Uh, normally, uh, the fruit muffin is 35, so we're getting an additional 11% experience gain thanks to that. So with all of our stuff crafting in the background here, uh, looks like it finished, but you know, as we're crafting a ton of stuff in the background, let's get some electronics going, for example. We're just going to be raking in the experience now. We're going to be needing some electronics. Let's go ahead and craft up maybe 30 more of these. We also have a Jaguar over here, so let's see with this new experience buff what we're looking at. Uh, that was 4,451 experience for that Jaguar. Awesome. And also, just look at our stamina bar. That's just from the Fruit Muffin. The stamina buff from that thing is absolutely insane. And the, the HP buff from the Savory Roll is also absolutely insane. Now, speaking of the Savory Roll, let's go ahead and craft those up. We only have 18 avocados, so we can't craft the full 20 quite yet. Let's craft up all the ones that we can here. 18. Stick the leftover stuff back into the freezer. Man, the, the expanded deep freeze is just so, so good. <laughs> if you've never had this and you're looking at it, I'm sure you're, you're feeling those pangs of jealousy because this is just amazing. You can stick your leftover ingredients here, no problem. Um, oh, these are watermelons we grew, so we can't stack. But... Yeah, just this extra storage is so good. You can stick little random things like meat in here and you know not have to worry about storage, basically. So, so good. So we have the first stack of our savory rolls 
also crafted up here. So let's eat one of these. And look at that HP bar. That is massive. And if we drink a health enhancement tonic on top of that, look at the HP bar. You can't even see it. It's, <laughs> it's behind the item bar at this point. So, man, you got this massive stamina bar. You have that massive HP bar. We're getting experience buffs from all of this. Uh, this is also 10% experience, 46% experience, 10% or 15% experience, and then 5% experience. So we could, you know, optimize these two a little bit easier, but we have so much, uh, you know, stringy meat and bacon at this point that let's just top those buffs off. And, you know, all of them last the full uh, 1600 seconds about with our talents invested in the longer food duration. So, you know, we are just chilling with the amount of HP, with the amount of experience gain. We are ready to do some serious work on this character now. So now that I'm looking at it, we actually could think about replacing our one of our meat buffs with like a fruit pie. This is 10% experience and, you know, stamina and HP, uh, but we have that vegetarian perk. So this will also get that additional bonus. You can see... Um, in the bottom left, the fruit muffin has a 130% modifier on its uh, on its effects. So, you know, we're going to want to focus on getting some good vegetable and fruit only foods as well, and we will be looking good. And that jaguar was 4,600. Just one more animal, and we should level up here. Maybe we just craft a couple things up at the base. Alright, so I'm going to start crafting up some tree sap over here, and this should actually put us over the edge, so let's get this going. Amazing. Just crafting a little tree sap there, and we got our level up. Absolutely awesome. Okay, so we're sitting on 33 titanium right now. I think it's time we start looking into getting ourselves some titanium tools as well. So let's hop into tier 4 over here. I'm going to want to get the Titanium Axe for sure. Um, this is really good just for getting wood. If you want to get those epoxies, you're going to want to use the Miasmic, of course. But if you want to just get a higher yield of wood, this actually gives you 140% yield. Um, whereas the Miasmic Axe uh, just gives you a 90% yield on regular wood. So you're going to be getting a lot more wood out of the Titanium Axe. So we're going to research that. Uh, we're also, of course, going to want the Titanium Pick. Titanium knife, uh, and eventually the titanium sickle. We have so many points, I might as well grab it right now. Um, but yeah, that's also something we want to work to today. We're going to need way more titanium. We have that one little biofuel drill going, but it's nowhere near enough for what we want to do. So I think maybe what we do is venture back out to that lava cavern area and see if we can't find some more titanium in the cave over there. I also think it's high time that we finally upgrade to the best bow in the game, the compound bow, or at least the best bow that you can craft here, planet side. So I'm going to get the ingredients up for this. We already have everything we need except for, of course, carbon fiber. <laughs> Always seem to be lacking on that. But let's get up these ingredients and craft ourselves a compound bow. Good morning, everybody. It is the next day, and we have everything we need for our compound bow. So let's craft this baby up right now. That is awesome. We are really starting to look good here. We got our compound bow. We got our food going. I think it's time that uh, we also look into getting ourselves a titanium axe because we are very short on our wood supply and I want to get some more of it. So in order to get the titanium axe, we're going to need four more carbon fiber. That's pretty much the only thing that we need. So let's go ahead and bake up a little bit more of that. All right, and just like that, we got ourselves a titanium axe. Amazing. Let's get that in our hotbar. And with this craft, we are officially out of both wood and oxide, so that's definitely going to be our priority here. Uh, but with this crafted up, we're also going to snag ourselves the titanium pick and get ourselves fully titaniumed out as far as our gathering tools go. All right, and there we go, titanium pickaxe. Absolutely awesome. 
We're ready for some serious gathering. We have our food buffs going too. We're gonna just be raking in the experience. I think we do go on a quick short run for some wood and for some oxide. And once we're done with that, let's go hit up the lava cavern and get ourselves as much titanium as we can find. All right, so out of a single tree, we're getting 350 wood. That is awesome. And then 64 oxide from one oxide node. We did 1300 damage with a flint arrow and our compound bow there. Also very nice. All right, so we just filled up on wood on these nearby trees. And what I'm actually gonna do is Save the titanium pickaxe for mining ores, and when we go out on these quick oxide runs, uh, I'm actually going to try out the uh, miasmic tool on that one. Let's get all of our stuff in here, let's grab our miasmic pick, <clears throat> and see what we can do in terms of gathering oxide with this thing. Alright, so I'm just going to see what it's like tanking the poison damage here. I actually had an idea about crafting uh, poison pills. Let's get this guy up. Uh, but crafting poison pills might actually give you a resistance from the miasmic poison damage. So let's just gather up all this, see how severe the damage gets, and re-strategize from there. Alright, we are totally full on our inventory. You can see we're almost at 600% on the uh, Miasmic debuff. We do have a skill that gives us regen every time we're damaged, and I think when we're in the forest over here, we're also getting our um, Forest Mastery perk, which gives us even more regen. So we're able to heal through uh, pretty much most of the damage, uh, even at 600% on the Miasmic downtick. Uh, but let's see if we do craft up some poison pills, if that actually uh, helps us resist the damage even better. Alright. We have our poison pill. Let's pop this poison pill. And then grab all of this. Okay, so it's still damaging us. It doesn't look like the poison pill has any effect on the miasmic, unfortunately. I guess the moral of the story is the poison pill doesn't do anything for the miasmic damage, that's unfortunate. Uh, but we do have an absolute ton of this to process into oxide now, so let's stick that in our machine here. Every single one of these is five oxide, so this is just... <laughs> this is more than we're ever going to need. Um, yeah, we're going to need wood way before we need uh, oxide at this point, but man. This miasmic pickaxe is so insanely powerful. That is just ridiculous, so every time we need sulfur, every time we need... I think you can do silica with this too, maybe? Um, but yeah, this thing is just crazy. Uh, but that's good to know that, you know, on this MOA, if we have full HP with all of our buffs going, we can pretty much just tank that damage. We don't need, like, an ox cart or anything like that, at least at this point. Um, we can just sprint over on our MOA. And I think with that in mind... Let's let our guy eat and drink a little bit. Let's get him in here. The staircase is always a little annoying. Let's get him in here. Um, I'm going to build a little bridge between the island and the arctic biome just because I'm tired of having to swim every time we go over there. So let's get the pieces that we need here. We got our bridge. That is awesome. Very simple, quick little bridge, but it's going to do the job for us. And our food buffs still have 600 seconds on them, so I'm just going to grab our salted versions of this. We're going to be eating those up pretty quickly here. And uh, with all of that taken care of, I think we go and try and find ourselves some more titanium. Alright, and before we go on that mining run, I'm finally actually going to craft some antibiotic pills. So this will keep us protected from pneumonia um, for 600 seconds a pill. Uh, so that's going to be really nice. Let's just grab two of them for now. I'm going to have the rest of these crafting up um, while we're away. 
but we're gonna need a lot of these, so I'm gonna craft up 20. Our staircase is looking pretty battered out here. We're gonna have to repair this whole thing. Um, I think if we're gonna be going out to this biome frequently, we're definitely gonna wanna upgrade this into a stone or scoria or brick or something. That way we don't have to worry about repairing it anymore. This one has that 10 HP. Good thing we came when we did. All right, we are back in this cave. Um, you know, some pretty traumatic memories from the last time we were in here. I think what I want to do is go around the left side here. I'm just going to park my mower right here. And if I turn left instead of going straight into the lava, um, we should be able to find some offshoot caves. Yeah, we turn this direction. And let's see what we can get. Here, one of the offshoot caves. We got the thing spawning. All right, here we go. Here's one of those small little caves I was talking about. Cool. I'm not sure if this is considered a lava cave, though. It says we're in the basalt expansion, uh, but I don't see any titanium or platinum here. That's super unfortunate. Might as well grab some of this copper while we're here, though. Test out the new pickaxe. Grab a little bit of aluminum, too, while we're out here. Oh, and our buffs just reset, so it's a good thing we brought all this with us. Go ahead and get all our buffs active again. Okay, so I'm in this part of the cave again, and it looks like uh, our ramps are taking damage indoors for some reason. I'm not sure why. This one didn't, and this one didn't, but that one is almost destroyed. Got some titanium we left behind. Awesome. Okay, and here's that lava area where we almost died, and there is obsidian right before my eyes. I can see it. I can't believe I didn't see that before. <laughs> so we could have had a much easier time uh, in that, that episode where we went all the way deep into the lava zone for obsidian. There's some more right here. Um, so we're going to come back here when we need obsidian, that's for sure. You also want to make sure you don't build wooden platforms out here around the lava. They will catch on fire. Uh, I've definitely done that in the past. Very dangerous. Alright, we got another cave here. A couple worms spawning in. Another one right here. We got some exotics too, that's awesome. Um, no titanium, I believe, but we got exotics, so. Win some, you lose some. Oh, there is some titanium right over here. Let's grab this. Unfortunately, half of it's sticking inside the rock, so we can't get all of it. Let's grab up these exotics, too. 29 exotics, just like that. Oh, and there's level 44. We are really leveling up fast with all of our experience buffs now. That's awesome. All right, I think that's pretty much it for this little series of tunnels down here. I'm just going to mop up some more gold and platinum, whatever we can fit in our inventory. We didn't get as much titanium as I would have liked. We got, uh, where is our titanium here? 119. So it's not it's totally small amount, but I definitely could have done with more. I'm also just going to grab up a little iron while we're here. We have a little bit in storage, but yeah, we're going to need it eventually. Alright, and we are totally full in our inventory. Let's head back to the MOA. Um, as you can see, just doing that extra little bit of cleanup work almost got us another half of a level. So we are just ripping through the levels with all of these XP buffs. Alright, made it back to the MOA. Now let's get this load of ores back to the base. Alright, home sweet home. Let's get everything in our furnaces going. So the other thing I'm realizing right now is that uh, our deep freeze is not fully active because we don't have enough power at night time, so that's definitely something we need to be careful of. Let's go ahead and sleep. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Our deep freeze is back up and running. And with that, rude awakening. 
I definitely think it's time that we figure out a battery system. We need to get a battery up and going, and that will ensure that even at nighttime when our solar panels can't be running, um, we will have enough power to keep that deep freeze going at least for a little bit into the night with a single battery. Uh, but first thing I want to do is let's make sure we prioritize the deep freeze in our network. Let's give this priority. We have our power creature deterrent <clears throat> and our deep freeze. That's going to be exactly 4,000 power, so our water wheels will be able to sustain these. Um, everything else will not be able to run at all at nighttime, but at least if we're away from the base like that, you know, our, our electric deep drill will shut off at night, but uh, at least our deep freeze will stay on. So that is an absolute massive load of oxide that we just got from this thing. Uh, we're going to let this keep going. This is going to just give us oxide for pretty much as long as we need it. I might actually just stick this in here for now and when we need more oxide and when we're starting to get a little low then I'll put it back in there. But uh, let's look at what we need for some batteries. So eight titanium plates. So it's a good thing we started getting more titanium because that is a lot of titanium. That's 24 titanium bars for a single advanced battery rack. Right now we only have 14. So we're going to need a lot more titanium if we're going to want to get those batteries going. And I think with that said, what I want to do right now is let's try and see if we can find ourselves another titanium deep vein. So I pretty much exhausted my knowledge of deep veins out in the Arctic. Um, all of the ones that I checked were ones that I've mined or am mining in my other save files. So we're going to craft this up and see if we can't go out into the Arctic zone and maybe spot ourselves another... Uh, titanium vein. Alright, and we got our deep mining ore scanner crafted up. Let's go ahead and whip this thing out, head out to the Arctic. Uh, maybe let's check in on our biofuels while we're out there too. Might as well just pop in a fresh can um, and see if we can't get ourselves some more titanium going. Loving the new bridge. Super convenient. So first thing, I think we check on our biofuel, see how much fuel we have left. And what I think I'm going to do is take the one we have on platinum right now and just pick it up. And if we find another titanium, we're going to get that one going. Alright, so we have about a quarter of the fuel left. I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate that, pick this thing up. Uh, after we're done looking for something new here, I'm going to go ahead and swap out all the other ones. But let's go ahead, let's take this thing out. Um, oh! So this one actually doesn't specify the type of ore. So the one that you get from the uh, orbital exchange, you can actually set it to a specific resource um, and then you can go and search for that specific resource. So this one just shows us the location of ores. Um, this is the one that, you know, obviously we just picked up, the, the platinum here. So... It's a little bit less useful than the one from the workshop, but it is way cheaper. But we're just going to go on our way in this direction and every once in a while hop off the MOA and see if we can't get another deep vein. Alright, so we have another signal in that direction. 49%. Let's go check that one out. It looks like we got another platinum here, not what we're looking for. Oh man, another platinum. We are striking out. Make sure we get that XP when we can. Oh, there's another one right here. Alright, 5,500 XP. Excellent. And, yeah, I'm just going to swap out the fuel while we're here. Why not? That's another 108 titanium ores. Very nice. So that's, uh, we probably have enough for the battery rack, but I still want to just finish up this journey, see if we can't find a few more deep veins and hopefully score another titanium. All right, and I think somewhere around here is another one. What do we have here? Uh, silica. Take a note of that and move on. All right. 
right, we got one more over here somewhere. Right here. Oh. Oh my gosh. We found titanium. That is so great. All right. We found a second titanium. That is going to be huge for us. Let's just go ahead and get this one drilling. Um, the reason I'm doing two titaniums right now is because I want to get to work on batteries. I want to get to work on a lot of things that require a lot of titanium right now. Um, so we're going to get those drilling. We have two coppers going. Uh, we have two titaniums going. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Alright, and with that taken care of, let's head back to the base, see how our titanium is progressing. Make sure we take advantage of our buffs, get some 5,000 experience from that wolf. Uh, but yeah, let's head back to the base, see how much titanium we have, and see if we can't get ourselves a advanced battery crafted up. Alright, we made it back. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I also realized I still have some crops that I harvested, some extras, so I'm going to dump those into the food boxes here. Um, yeah, we got 100 in here. Uh, we have 88 in here, that's great. Let's stick the watermelons in there too. Uh, but yeah, awesome. Let's get this stuff smelting. So we have the titanium for the 8 plates. Let's go ahead and get those going. And once that's done, uh, we have pretty much everything else that we need. And we have the titanium plates. Let's get this bad boy crafted up. So good. All right. And I think for this thing, for right now, let's just stick it down on the floor next to everything over here. And there we go. So. This can store 6 million power, and it has an output limit of uh, 10,000 per second. So, you know, we'll definitely have enough to keep at least our uh, deep freeze and um, creature deterrent powered up at night, even if we're using some other crafting stations and our water wheels go offline. So, we got a pretty intense lightning storm going on outside. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this thing wired up. Amazing, alright, and we are starting to generate our power in here. We're going to be able to store up to 6 million. We have plenty of excess power going for us during the day. Uh, we got a little forest fire going on over there. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling great about this battery rack. Just in time, you know, we got the electrical storm outside reading our brand new electrical technology. Alright, and I think that is going to do it for today. We made a lot of good progress. It was a little bit of a slower episode. You know, we took our time, got our farming and cooking all set up. We have a lot of delicious foods to think about and consume here down on Prometheus now. But we also got our first mission completed, which is an awesome first step towards my ultimate goal, which again is to complete every single mission here on the map uh, there will be an expansion to the map hopefully soon uh, this year and maybe that will entail new missions as well so hopefully the timing lines up with that update um, but yeah you know we we got our platinum or rather our titanium tools going we got our farm so we made a lot of good progress we have our battery up and running too i'm just thinking back on all the stuff we accomplished so yeah there's a lot that we did, but there is still so much more that needs to be done, and I hope you all stick with me in the next one. So until then, thank you for watching. Goodbye.